Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, a rare treat, a vintage Rolex chronograph. This is the 6238 36 millimeters in steel watch that's often described as the pre-Daytona. Uh, very similar to the original Cosmograph, the 6239. This is the 6238, and it's very similar in size, profile, and mechanics. The model was made from 1962 to about 1968. This one with a 1 million range serial number is right on the cusp between 1964 and 1965 in terms of age. Now, the watch is 36 millimeters in diameter by 13.3 millimeters thick, and you can see a lot of that is the box section plexiglass. It is 43.8 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and I measure a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Let me show you the lugs carefully, because I know you're going to want to know about refinishing and condition, and the watch has been refinished during its history. You can see that there is wear, there is reduction of metal. It is not perfect. We chose not to polish it or refinish it again in any form and maintain all of the metal that's present. I would rate this watch as a 7 to 7.5 out of 10 as a strong daily driver, but not necessarily a time capsule piece or a museum piece. Piece. Now we'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And you can see it's fascinating to encounter a Rolex chronograph that has about the same wrist profile as a 36 millimeter modern day day just. It's also uncommon to encounter Rolex sports watches on leather straps. So this really does take you back. It's a way to transport yourself back in ambiance, attitude, and style. And it looks great on any wrist. It's also a formidable unisex option precisely because it does have a modest size. And again, my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference for reference. Taking a quick look at the strap, probably not something we want to overemphasize because it is a modern component, but it is a brand new Rolex factory calfskin strap, black on the top, uh, sort of taupe on the bottom, and then you can see it has a folded edge and a monotone stitch and a Rolex factory stainless steel pin buckle that we added just to keep everything brand specific. Taking a quick look at the case, you can see that the hoods of the lugs are correctly satinated and then the flanks are polished. There is wear, but the watch is completely intact and it looks good. The question is, is it going to look good on your wrist? The answer is yes. Now it does feature a screw down crown, pump style pushers, no guard profile, and a big difference compared to the later Daytona, the 6239, is that the tachymeter here for gauging the speed of, say, a car on a flying kilometer or mile, uh, the tachymeter is internal. It's printed on the dial itself. We have a outstanding, probably recent edition, a Rolex factory plexiglass crystal, and then the dial is a silver sunburst with sunken registers that have a concentric pattern inboard. You could see that there's actually a little bit of glue on this crystal. It's not on the dial itself. The dial is in very good condition. Well, it probably was re-loomed at one point. It was done well. So, again, again, original factory tritium loom. It's long since faded. We have applique indices, which are alternated between satin and polish, and you can see that contrast. It, the polish still has twinkle as you move it through the light. Of course, there was the Rolex crown. Back then, Rolex didn't put much on the dial. So you can see it's a relatively clean aesthetic, uncommon on modern Rolex watches. Well, it get a little bit closer so you can better see. Some of these marks are on the crystal, not on the dial, so I want to move it around a little bit so you get that parallax advantage to see what's on the dial and what's just a mark on the plexiglass. The dial is quite clean. I would rate the dial, if the watch is a 7.5, I would say the dial is an 8.5 to 9. The dial is very straight on this watch. Internally, it is a Rolex caliber 72B, which is based on the Valjoux 72. Rolex does modify it extensively. If you take a look at the bridges and the wheels on a standard 72, and then on the Rolex application, you'll see that the Rolex uses fine finish where a conventional 72 would look very raw. The parts, the bridges, the wheels, even the plate on the Rolex version are anything but generic and highly customized. So manual wind, it beats away at the vintage 18,000 vibration per hour rate. It is a column wheel lateral clutch chronograph. And of course, it's in good shape. Although you can't see it, I would rate it as about an 8 out of 10 in terms of total condition. And it is a 17 joule movement that is stamped ROW and adjusted in three positions. So this watch was originally a US market watch because it has the U US ROW Rolex import stamp on the balance. It's a 48 hour power reserve and it's a very traditional type of manual wind column wheel chronograph. And of course, Rolex makes a bunch of changes aesthetically, also a Breguet overcoil and the use of Kif shock 
protection, which was Rolex's preference for eons. Not water resistant as it is a vintage watch, nor is it luminescent as it is an original tritium dial. Nevertheless, it's about as striking as you can get in the light and high and dry. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.